Sezen Mahmud. Sezen Mahmud is a medical scientist by profession. He is currently serving as the assistant dean and professor of medicine at the University of Central Florida College of Medicine. He earned his MBBS degree from Bangladesh, his Master of Public Health, mile per hour, degree with a fellowship in endocrinology from the renowned Harvard University of America, and his PhD degree in behavioral science from Birmingham, Alabama, USA. His walks in many aisles of literature, novelist, storyteller, filmmaker, author of children's literature, and lyricist. Number of his published books is 30. More than 50 of his research papers and scientific articles have been published so far. Award In literature, he received the Bangladesh Shishu Academy Award. In science, he received American Association for Cancer Research Faculty Scholar Award, American Public Health Association Early Career Award, Our Pride Award, 2005, Alabama Power Foundation Outstanding Achievement Award, 2000 International Diabetes Foundation Fellowship Award, 1996. Existence The room in which I'm sitting has a door which after being closed tightly blends with the color of the wall in such a way that it seems as if there is no door at all. There's a long table and two chairs. After tiring of sitting at one side for about an hour, I've started to notice the niceties of the room. The one who sat on the other chair had asked politely, please wait here. Would you like to have some tea or coffee? And then left after I replied no. The wall opposite to where I'm sitting has, what can be said to be, a large dark glass wall. In Hollywood movies, crime specialists and psychologists examine the postures, facial lines, and so on of the convicts from behind such glass walls. Suddenly I felt that right now someone or other was analyzing my every move from the other side. Once I thought of unzipping my pants and masturbating since you're watching, you might as well watch free porn. But the thought vanishes as soon as it occurs. Here I am a respectable university professor, not some sexually perverted or someone who is mentally ill. However, the thought kept my mind busy for a while and eased the tiredness and tension caused by the long wait. They have brought me here directly from the office. They didn't let me talk to my family or any lawyer. They said they are from the National Security Agency, they want to ask me a few questions as a person of interest of the American National Security. Me. I know my rights. I have said that I wouldn't speak a word without a lawyer. But I don't have money for a lawyer. That is the reason behind this delay. Now the only door of the room opens. Enter the man in black suit and tie that I had seen at first. Behind him is a dangerously beautiful woman in a short skirt and a matching jacket over a dress shirt. She looks like an Indian or a Latina with her dark hair tinged with red, perhaps highlighted. She has a briefcase in her hand. This official-looking briefcase does not suit this beautiful woman. I pass my time in these observations, even though I am irritated beyond measure, because after reaching the height of irritation, I cannot get more irritated. Dr. Hossein, this is Mariella Hobart, your attorney from the U.S. government, says the man. I could not recall his name earlier, but I remembered it just now, Larry Davidson. I shake hands. From the name Mariella, I was now sure that she was a Latina. And her accent when she said nice to meet you further clarified that she may have been Puerto Rican or Peruvian. After talking about primary legal matters, Larry whom I wanted to call Langra, opened a file and, with my permission, began recording on the digital recorder. Please state your name, doctor. Muhammad Ahmed Hossein. Since childhood I am embarrassed by this name of mine. After my birth at the Akika or naming ceremony, the Mulana Sahib invited to our home, had apparently chosen this name. Out of respect for the Mulana, my father made this my official name. I was not embarrassed by the name for any religious reason. I am from Bangladesh, so there was nothing wrong in wanting a Bangla name, but many Arabic names are beautiful too. However, everything seemed to be squeezed into my name, without caring about how it aesthetically sounded. U.S. citizen? Yes, I answer briefly. What subject do you teach? Political economy. After these ordinary questions, he came to the main point. Motioning to a copy of an article printed in a newspaper in front of me, he asked, Was this written by you? 
I looked at Langra, that is at Larry in irritation and said, my name is already there. Every letter of this is written by me. Please read the title for the record. I read in a dispassionate voice, American denial, is this the end of neo-imperialism? Are you anti-American? What is written in this article is nothing but hate for America. In reply, I spoke as nonchalantly as before, from my professional position, I've put forward an objective analysis of America's political morals and their outcomes. There is nothing anti-American in that. Are you anti-Islamic? What is written in this article is nothing but hate for Islam. I've only put forward the problems and crises of Islam, and their outcomes by analyzing data and statistics. There is nothing anti-Islamic in that. Then why don't you write about any other religion? Demanded Shamshul Alam, the chairman of the university's investigating committee, whom I wanted to call by the name of a domestic animal. I don't write about other religions. I was born in a country where Muslims are in the majority. I have the right to talk about this religion, although my predictions are applicable to other religions as well. You wrote that the Muslims are making a big deal about the haram halal issue because they're in denial about their own consumption of the haram. Why did you write this? Have I written anything wrong? In Islam, accepting bribes is haram, but bribery is high in the Muslim countries of the world. In Islam, speaking ill of others is haram, but that is also common. In Islam, monarchies are almost haram, but the richest Muslim country in the world, Saudi Arabia, is ruled by a monarchy and people from all over the world are going to perform hajj in that almost haram country. Do you want me to go on? You are a munafk. Mr. Shamshul Alam leapt up from his chair, shaking in anger. You can leave now. I came out of the room silently. The man named Larry said nothing and left the room. He returned after exactly two minutes. I was so tense that I had begun keeping a record of every second. Meanwhile, my lawyer Mariella whispered to me that if I did not want to answer any question, I should refuse directly. I told her that I would answer all questions, because I had nothing to fear. Larry returned. Placing a file in front of me, he said. Is this application yours? I recognized it as soon as I glanced at it. Yes, it is. You are a university professor. Why then did you want to train as a pilot? It was my childhood dream to fly a plane. In my country, there is a character named Masood Rana like James Bond, who could do everything. He was my childhood hero. When I came to this country and found an aviation school in the same campus, I applied there. As a teacher, I am supposed to receive free training. Did you learn how to fly? I took only four lessons, and then 9-11 happened. I think still I can fly. Larry examined me for a while with a frown on his face. Then he said, you know how to fly only, do you know how to land? As before, I spoke without any trace of anger. I didn't get a chance to learn to land a plane. How would I know that? Larry stared at my file as if he had found something very important there. Yeah, I thought so. That's what you need. I can't help you. Mr. Shamshul Alam came into my office and said in an angry voice, Mr. Ahmed, I can't help you in any way. You have dug your own grave. I have sent your report to the education ministry. This is a copy of it. I took the copy and placed it on the table. I did not want to know what was in the report. Mr. Shamshul Alam pulled a chair closer to me and unnecessarily whispered, Your life is at stake, Mr. Ahmed. Do you keep track of the outside world? Newspapers are writing against you, people are protesting in the streets demanding your death sentence. You have no idea. Coldly, I said, you two are against me. Who made you the chairman of this investigation committee? Who said I am against you? I tried to save you. If you admitted your error and apologized, I could have included that in the report. It's only humane virtue to forgive. What do I apologize for? Telling the truth? Or for thinking differently from you? All truths are not for telling. There are things like Zyari Botany. You shouldn't cross your limits. Just tell me one thing. What? 
I asked. You wrote that the idea of the Creator is probably mankind's biggest delusion, how could you say something so blasphemous? You are a wise man, and Allah has given you knowledge and wisdom to do good, not to commit kufri. I knew there was no use in discussing or debating with this man. How could I make him understand my position? So, I asked, well Mr. Shamshul Alam, do you think I have made a mistake? Definitely. Then please pray for me. Mr. Shamshul Alam flared up at these words. Are you joking with me? You will not be forgiven for your sins anywhere. The Almighty Himself will not save you. Even God cannot save you if you don't tell the truth. My lawyer Mariella spoke up at Larry's menacing words. Objection. You are threatening my client. Sorry, said Larry like a robot, and then he began again. I have the last file with me. Do you know the man in this photo? I looked carefully at the printed picture. It was a nondescript face that could have been from any African country. Still the person seemed familiar, but I couldn't quite identify him. I said, no, I don't recognize him. Do you recognize the name? Asked Larry and thrust another photo forward under which was written Yusuf Erasto. The name and the photo together jogged my memory. I said, yes, now I do recognize him. Yusuf, he was our student Somalian. Did you sponsor him in your program? I wouldn't exactly say that I sponsored him. We have a global exchange program with Somalia. I was the chair of the selection committee. But you recommended him especially? Yes, because he was the most qualified among all the candidates and had better GRE scores. Can you tell me what your point is? Do you know that he was arrested for his connection with the 9-11 hijackers? Am I supposed to know? I countered. You tell me. Larry altered the tone of his voice. His rough tone hurt me but I don't say anything. Larry spoke again. Dr. Hossein, you have written an anti-American article, taken flying lessons before 9-11, sponsored a student who is a fundamentalist, a terrorist. Do you think all these are coincidental? Totally circumstantial. You don't have any case. My lawyer Mariella speaks out at this point. In reply, Larry chewed his words like the villains from movies and said, We are living in a different time now. Nothing is circumstantial. We never thought people would get on a plane, hijack it, and slam it into a building. What is its connection with me? I raised my voice now. That's what we are trying to find out. What is the relationship with you and who are you working for? Who are you working for? The state minister for education unexpectedly asked in colloquial Bangla, and I was taken by surprise. Very politely, I asked, I don't quite understand it. I don't work for anybody. What are you trying to imply exactly? I am trying to ask whether you're taking India's money or America's, or someone else's? No one writes things like this, unless it's for money or some gain. You have the wrong idea. I didn't write it for any gain. Do you read the paper? Meaning? Meaning, do you see the news, the demand for your death sentence, the protests, and so on? It's not possible for us to keep you safe anymore. Then why are you with the government if it's not possible to provide a teacher with safety? You were a teacher, so remain a teacher. You just want to earn fame by writing these. Listen. High-level government officials have said that it's not possible to provide you with safety anymore. If you want, I can arrange with those officials to move you to America. Otherwise we won't be responsible if any harm befalls you. Why would I go to America? This is my country. Can't I write about my country? Then write about the country. Instead, you are writing about religion and hurting the religious sentiments of countless people. In as calm and low a voice as possible I asked, is religion separate from the country? What if I say that you have hurt my atheistic feelings? Everybody feels in the same way, you know. You shut up. You so-called intellectuals create only chaos. You don't know how to run the country. All are opportunists. I will make sure you leave the country ASAP. 
The man who couldn't speak in proper Bangla now jumped up from the chair, swearing in proper English. Quietly, I withdrew from the room of the state minister for education. We are very sorry, Dr. Hossein. We can't renew your contract for this year. We really appreciate your contribution to our faculty. Professor Martin, the dean of the School of Business of my university in America, said this. I know that whatever I ask will be answered in a softer tone than this and with empathetic words, but there is no good in it. Knowing that I still said, but you hired me for three years. There is still a year left. That's right, but we are short on our budget. That's why we have to trim the non-tenured positions. We are very sorry. Please don't hesitate to let me know if I can be of any assistance. Thank you, I said, and left the dean's room. Mariella has told me to go to her office urgently. Even though I lost the job due to her efforts, I got the chance so far to move around as a partially free man. I just have to take permission if I leave the country or go out of state. I know very well that if they want they can keep a close watch on every activity of mine without much trouble. It's possible now to keep an eye on even a pin that has dropped in any corner of the world thanks to the satellites, and I am nothing compared to that. With tired feet I walk to the subway and learn after reaching Mariella's office that she would be there in five minutes. The secretary seats me in Mariella's office and leaves. I look around the room closely. Doctors and lawyers of this country exude money, and it is visible in the opulence of their offices. In one corner, there are four chairs around a circular table. Sitting in one of those chairs, I look at Mariella's academic and non-academic recognitions hanging on the wall. I look at the many different photos. I remember that I too was one of the best students of a small country. On one side there are some amazing photos on the wall, a caveman standing alone, separate from his pack. A terribly empty world before him. Whose photo is this? Even though he lived close to nature and mankind, the loneliness of this caveman who has been left out of his group has made the photo a canvas without a horizon. Sorry Dr. Hossein for being late. I am coming from the Homeland Security office. It's okay, I say. I couldn't bring good tidings for you. They are saying that even though your direct connection with terrorism couldn't be proved, your article pilot training and sponsorship of the Somalian student, these three incidents together have put you on the list of suspects. I consider myself an intelligent being. So I could understand that there was no point in arguing with her. It's clear that Mariella has made an effort for me. Mariella says again. You had applied for immigration to this country under political asylum. In fact you were sent away from your country. Isn't it so? Yes. I've spoken to your U.S. ambassador. They have said that they can't send you back to your country in the current political situation, but it doesn't seem like you will get immigration here either. They have even deported U.S. citizens without any proof and solely based on suspicion. Can you understand the situation? Yes, I understand. The least I could do is have Homeland Security not file any complaint against you. You can leave this country at will and go wherever you want. The American government will bear the expenses of your departure. With the degree you have, you can get immigration in many good countries. I will give you the number of one of my immigration lawyer friends. He will help. I say, thanks Mariella. Then, Almost as if to myself I say, Mariella, do you know why I was exiled from my country? Mariella's eyes have a strange expression. She says, I do. I had to read everything in your file. You have begun this war today, but we began it a long time ago. I know. Forgetting all her professional manners, Mariella reaches out and hugs me. I am so sorry, Dr. Hossein. My parents had also come to this country as immigrants, under political asylum. They were high-ranking government officials. They were sent back to our military men by the American government, and they were executed. All they could do before leaving was put me in a foster home. I know the pain. Tears run down Mariella's cheeks. Now the photo of a young Mariella with her parents, hanging on the wall among many others, catches my eye. Taking my documents, I leave Mariella's office. I take the train to the suburbs where my apartment is. My wife is there with my six-year-old daughter Shadhina. 
I have to walk a little bit here. Even though darkness has fallen, the paths are clear in the neon lights. The preoccupied silence of the suburbs engulfs me. I think as I walk alone. From today I have no country, no refuge. I have been exiled from my country, but I am also an alien in another country, like someone from a different planet. I am like the caveman who left his group in search of the unknown and became alone. Am I really here on this earth? Among this sea of humans? One day then in some other country, will my daughter, whom I ambitiously name Shadhina, also shed tears, as she places her hand on the shoulder of a lonely exile and say, I know the pain question mark. Translated from Bengali by Atanu Roy Chowdhury, and edited by Arifa Rahman.